Dr. Justin Gray here. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel, Dr. Justin Gray Presents. Um, as some of you may know who have watched some of my previous videos, I'm a teacher at the Gray School of Music in Dallas, Texas. But today, as usual, I am joining you from Arlington, Texas. All of the teachers at the school uh, where I work have been sent home uh, during this time of the coronavirus to teach in their little e-studios. And so here I am. And today's little talk concerns rhythm. Uh, what rhythm is, how to teach perhaps, or some tips on teaching your students good rhythmic practice, and, and the like. So again, as I always say in my videos, after 20 years of teaching, um, what I'm about to say may not be the best way or the, certainly the only way. You know, a teacher's way of teaching as is, is as unique as the person themselves. And, but, you know, these are tips that have helped me out. So first of all, what is rhythm? Well, rhythm is the organizing principle of beats, right? I once heard a story that in very early orchestras, the conductor's job was to basically take a stick and just wham, wham, wham. <laughs> um, there's something very primal about rhythm, isn't there? I once had a theory teacher um, at Juilliard when I was there. His name is Michael White. He's still very much alive. Very, very kind. Extremely wonderful teacher. Uh, it's the kind of musician or uh, composer. He's, com he's a composer. Uh, but the kind of musician that's seasoned by a lifetime of uh, listening, learning, and watching people play. Just a marvelous professor. Anyways, he said that if you were to go to pretty much any culture in the world, no matter how advanced or uh, how primal or whatever, you would most undoubtedly encounter the interval of the fifth. And you think about the mazurkas of Chopin, for example, the middle sections always include most of the fifth most of the time. Well, the same is true in rhythm. You would find most likely a very hearty rhythm uh, to any you know, uh, music that you may encounter uh, in, from any society. So anyways, rhythm, it's the organizational principle of beats. And it's very important that your students have a strong sense of rhythm. I, I think it was Walter Gieseking or um, one of his students, uh, Alfred Willardew, with whom I studied, um, said that most mistakes of the piano are rhythmical. They are, they are rhythmic in nature, rather. And uh, they have, uh, as their underlying fault, a failure, perhaps, or a need to improve upon the rhythmic clarity of the passage. And that is quite true. If, if one rushes through things uh, and doesn't have a clear sense of the rhythm in mind, the more likely one is to make mistakes. Children are no, no different. So anyways, the traditional um, way of teaching rhythm is to write in beats, right? One and two and three, you know, and on and on and on. And have the student count those back or say them out loud. When I first started teaching, I started to do this. And the students did not like that at all. It was very, it was successful maybe 40% of the time. Um, in a piece like this, Night of the Tarantella by uh, the Fabers, uh, Nancy Faber, that is, um, you know, one could write in the beats. And that's what I used to do on this little piece. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I would count it with the student and they would say it kind of in a mumble voice and I would make them say it louder. Again, it's that pounding of rhythm into the student. You want to find a way to teach rhythm fun and creatively and to make it lighthearted for them. Because as I've said in previous videos, in your teaching, the more you pound things into students, that's when motivation just starts to take, right? So what can we do? Well, uh, Mayron Cole, for example, a uh, great pedagogue, who wrote a series for teaching pre-K, kindergarten, first grade uh, students, although her series goes all the way up there through high school. Um, but I particularly use her thoughts on early music uh, for children and how to instruct them. Says that uh, never uses the approach one and two and three and. She always says, well, just say sh long, short, long, short, long, short, long. Give something that the child's mind can connect to instead of... Um, Making, making things overly complicated. So in this one, I would do long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. Um, 
something like that. So a pattern of long, short, long. You can do that or short, short, long, long, or whatever, whatever the, the rhythm might be. Uh, you know, I think it was Bernstein in one of his talks at Harvard uh, went into the fact that rhythm in music imitates language. So if you're speaking French, and I do not speak French, you may have a sense that goes, that goes like this, you know. And so rhythm and music can kind of imitate that inflection. So any inflection that you give with your voice can help the student understand rhythm. It's quite interesting. You can also be whimsical about it. You can say, I'm a little happy dog and I like to run, something like that. Uh, make up a little story, or if um, sometimes I'll incorporate their uh, their name into the rhythm, or something like that. So, uh, anyways, rhythm is very important, but it can also be a source of again just sort of pounding st stuff into the students, and kind of a dry, you know, sort of topic that can kill motivation and make piano a little less fun that day. Of course, rhythm is hard work. And I find that I often explain to students who are playing very advanced repertory, where you really do have to um, break things down with the rhythm and the like. I tell them, you know, just do the hard work now, and then later rhythm becomes internalized and you really don't have to think about it as much. Um, but anyways, like I said, most, or as I mentioned, another teacher had said to me, um, most mistakes in piano playing uh, are rhythmic in nature. They have... Um, so there's some sort of improvement in the rhythm foundationally that needs to be there. So um, another thing with uh, that ties or flows from rhythm is tempo. And you'll find that when the students understand the rhythm, you know, or understand the little phrase that you say, um, they're less likely to play too fast. So if, they, um, if they're speeding along, um, rather than sort of socking metronome speeds at them. Uh, perhaps try and break down the rhythm and bring clarity to that. that. That sometimes can slow down the playing and make it, you know, bring some clarity to their performance. So anyways, those are some of my uh, little general tips on rhythm. Uh, rhythm is uh, very fascinating. It's a fascinating foundational principle of music. And um, like I mentioned, his name earlier, Walter Kieseking. If you listen to Giza, King, Giza King's playing, uh, as he was a great artist all through the first half of the 20th century, the rhythm is what holds the structure together. And um, I find it is the very same principle for teaching. So anyways, hope you've enjoyed my thoughts. And again, this is Dr. Justin Gray, and I will see you next time.